In this section, we're going to start at the top of our Apex hierarchy and create a workspace. After we create that workspace, we'll be able to go into it and start developing applications. Before I do that, I'm going to hop into another tool from Oracle called Oracle SQL Developer. Oracle SQL Developer is a free tool from Oracle that allows you to get inside of your database and do things like create new users or update data. I'm going to connect to my local database, and inside of my local database, I can see all of the different users inside of my database. I have a user called Movies, and that user has a table called Movie. This is what I'm going to base my first Apex application off of. You can see Movie has typical column names like title and category, rating, and it has a bunch of data inside of it also. Why is it important to know the name of the schema and the name of the table before we start building our workspace? Oracle Application Express is going to generate a lot of PL SQL code, and that PL SQL code is stored inside the database. Those PL SQL pieces of code will be used to drive Application Express and display the information to the end user through the browser. When we create a workspace, we have to define an end user in the database that's going to hold all of those different PL SQL pieces of code. In this case, we're going to create it inside the movie schema. Just because we're accessing a table owned by the movie schema doesn't mean that we have to store the Apex objects inside of the movie schema. We can store them anywhere we want, as long as the user that stores the PL SQL packages has privileges to select, insert, update, and delete information for the movie's objects. In this example, we're going to store all of the PL SQL packages generated by Apex inside of the movie schema. Let's hop back into a browser and work through the process of actually creating a new workspace. I'm logged into my Application Express environment as the admin user. I'm going to select Manage Workspaces, and then I'm going to create a workspace. I can give the workspace name anything I want. So I'm going to make it something that's easy for me to remember. And I'm going to call it movies underscore WS. I can specify a workspace ID and a workspace description to make my administrative tasks easier. You'll notice the only mandatory field, which is specified by this asterisk, is the actual workspace name. I can hard code the workspace ID if I want to. Usually, the only reason you'll have to do that is to maintain consistency with a development or test environment. I don't have to specify that information. Oracle will generate that information automatically if I don't have those requirements. I click on Next, and you'll see that the first thing I have to do is specify a schema. I'm going to reuse an existing schema, and I can select the Movies schema inside my database. Again. Apex will generate a lot of PL SQL code behind the scenes for your Apex environment. All of those PL SQL pieces have to be stored somewhere. By specifying the movie schema, I'm telling Apex that everything that's generated for this workspace will be stored inside that movie schema. I can identify an administrator for this workspace. This is different than the administrator that we logged into for the Apex environment. If you remember, on the first page, when I logged into my Apex environment, I specified a workspace of internal. Internal is the workspace that allows me to do all of these other administrative type tasks. This admin user is different from that admin user. This is going to be the administrator for my movies underscore WS workspace. The password has to follow a bunch of different rules. So I'm going to go through and make sure that I have a password that follows all of the different password rules that we've seen defined earlier. You'll also notice that email is a mandatory field. Why is this important? The email has to be specified here because one of the things that developers can do is make requests of the administrator of the workspace to say, I need more space inside the workspace. Or maybe I want you to create a test user or a development user, or a user acceptance test user inside the workspace. By specifying the email here, developers can go through and automatically make requests of the administrator for the workspace to do these different types of tasks. So I'm going to go through and add my email here. 
Anytime you work through a wizard, you're going to see a similar set of objects on your page. Along the top, there will be a status bar that shows you where you are in the wizard. Every wizard inside of Apex has a confirmation at the very end to make sure that you've set all of the different parameters for whatever it is you're doing properly. So you can see I have a summary page here that specifies the name of my workspace, the security group ID, a description, the username for the administrator of my workspace, the email that's associated with them, and what schema I'm going to use. I can then say create workspace. Oracle Application Express goes ahead and creates that workspace. So now if I log out and return to the login page, I have more than one workspace. When I created my original environment, the only workspace that was there was the internal workspace, which is similar to the system table space inside my database. Now I have more than one workspace. I can now go in to my movies underscore WS workspace, log in as my admin user, and do things specific to this workspace, like create other users, start developing objects. Again, when I create a new workspace, I only have one user, the admin user. And that's very similar to inside of an Oracle database. When you create a database, there's always the system users before you go ahead and start populating that information. So when I log into my movies.ws workspace, again, I have to change the password. I'm automatically logged out. So then I have to log in with my new password. Now I'm presented with a different page. This isn't the administration for my entire Apex environment page. I'm now in the administration page for my particular workspace. And you can see on the top right, I can see what workspace I'm logged into, movies underscore WS. From here, I can now go one level deeper inside of my Apex hierarchy and start creating applications. I can also create users. I can also assign security privileges that go along with those users. So we've created a development workspace inside of our Apex environment. And in the next couple of lessons, we're going to start actually developing applications inside of this new workspace.